This lesson is on rational exponents, also known as fraction exponents, in alternate representation of radicals. This means that when you have a radical or a root, when we simplify it, we can look at the process, and this is a square root, although it's not always noted. Remember, if it's not noted, it's a square root, meaning we're looking for perfect squares in order to simplify. So 9 is the same as 3 times 3, and so that's actually a perfect square, right? So that's 3 squared, square root. As we saw in the previous video, that equals 3. So essentially, when you look at it, we're actually looking for pairs of factors. It's as if this square root is saying how many pairs of factors do you have? And so you could actually see this as 3 to the power of 2 divided by 2 in the sense that we're looking for groups of 2 out of the 2 that we have. Now this is a little unclear here, so we'll look at a few other examples to make it more clear. So 27 is 3 times 3 times 3, and so now, because of this cube root, we're looking for triplets. So we've got cube root of 3 cubed, which we know is 3. But technically, it's like we've had, we had 3 factors of 3, and we were looking for groups of 3, and we had one group of 3, which was 3. Now, in this example, 81 is 9 times 9, which is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So that's actually the cube root of 3 to the power of 4. So within here, it's like, well, we're looking for how many groups of 3 threes are we looking for? And actually, there's one left over. So we're saying that we have four threes, and we're dividing them into groups of three to get rid of the root. So if that's an example of taking a fractional exponent instead of a root. So in general, you can see that the root bit, this actually tells you how many groups of blank are there. So how many groups of your factor are there? Well, you're taking your factor and saying, whatever I have, in this case m, I take it and divide by the number of times that the factor is being looked for. So, for now, you can just see this, and as we work towards more examples, you can convince yourself that this indeed is true. So this can be written like this in the same way. So switching forms. If something's in a root form, put it in a fraction form if or otherwise, depending on what's needed. So try these examples out and see if you can just switch the form of them. So this one, here we have 3 squared, but this root 5 really means how many groups of 5 are there. So if we have 3 squared, how many groups of 5 factors will there be? In this case, there aren't enough to simplify to get out of the root. It's always good to write them as powers, so notice powers of primes are actually best uh, so think of prime factorizing this. This will be 5 times 5, so that's 5 squared. So that's actually 5 squared, and they're looking for groups of 4. This would be the same as if they had 5 to the power of 1 half. So you can see that the, the fourth root of 25 is actually the same thing as the square root of 5. You could try it on your calculator. So let's rewrite this here. That's 16, and 16 is 4 squared, which is 2 to the power of 4. You can write out the factors if you like. So this means that we're taking the square root of all of this. So we're, it's like we're taking all of this to the 1 half. 2 to the 4, x to the 4, y to the 2. But you'll notice that all the exponent rules still apply, even for these fractional exponents, because 
they're still exponents. So this exponent actually will come in and it's like as if we've got to the power 4 to the 1 half times x to the 4 to the 1 half times y squared to the 1 half. So this is 2 to the power of 4 times a half, which is 2, x to the power of 4 times a half, which is 2, and y to the power of 2 times a half, which is 1. You can see if you simplified that root, the square root of 16 would be 4, which is 2 squared. The square root of x to the 4 would be x squared, and the square root of y squared would be y. So it's just showing you a few different ways of approaching it. In this case, we've got a few things going on. We've got a cube root and to the power of 5. So this cube root actually is as if it was a power of 1 third and it's to the power of 5. So we've got lots of uh, powers to powers going on here. Remember we multiply if they're powers to powers. This is to the power of 1. So this is, let's do the outside power first, get that done. So 1 third times 5 will be 5 thirds. So we're taking x to the power of 1 to the 5 thirds is x to the 5 thirds, and y to the 2 to the power of 5 thirds, which will be multiplied and therefore will be 10 thirds. And that's all you can do. Now these ones are all in fractional form, rational form, so we want to switch the form and put them back into root form. So remember that the bottom number tells you the type of root it is because it indicates to you how many groups you're looking for groups of factors, that is, and this here will be the exponent of what you actually have, because it's the top number. Now, remember that a negative exponent caused a reciprocal to happen, so we can first use that rule. If you're forgetting these rules, please go back to exponent rules, uh, the explanation on expo exponent rules. Everything's building on itself here, as you can see. So this is 1 over 3x to the 2 fifths. And then that's essentially the same as taking the fifth root of 3x all squared. So if you want to break that down a little more, you could also say that that's 3 squared and x squared which is 9x squared. Now, there's a big difference between these two examples, so that's why they're both here. So this here has a bracket, that means this exponent is applying to the bracket, meaning the whole thing went to the basement. But here, this negative exponent is only on the x. Be very careful, because that 3 is just hanging out on its own. And then it's being multiplied by the reciprocal of 1 over x to the 1 half. So technically that's the same as 3 over square root of x. Now there's an issue with this that we're going to go over in a little bit, but I'll introduce it here. We never want to have roots in the denominator. So in this case what you could do, because you know it's a fraction and you can multiply top and bottom by the same thing, you would multiply by the root of x so that in the bottom root x times root x that's the same as root of x squared which we know is x and we're assuming all our variables are positive so that's just an x and then we have 3 root x on top so this would be the desired answer you never want to have uh, roots in the denominator but that's called rationalizing the denominator and there's another video on that so check it out. And finally, here we've got this bracket, but this one has a plus. Be very careful when you see pluses because rules that you think will work will not necessarily work. In fact, they won't. So this plus, if it were a times, then yes, you could take x to the power of 2 thirds and 2y to the power of 2 thirds, but it's not 
a power. It's not a time sign. So you need to keep this as a bracket. It's still x plus 2y. That's held together. That's actually just like a big x. That's one thing, one item. And it's all to the power of 2 thirds, meaning it's a cube root, right? And then inside is squared. So you could write it like that. You could actually expand it if you like. First term squared plus double the first times the last. You can foil or distribute, uh, but if you remember the format, the special format of squaring a binomial, you'll notice it's the first term squared plus or minus twice the first times the last, which will be 4xy, plus the square of the last term. So let's look at some examples that involve evaluating. So you actually have numbers instead of letters. So again, here, this negative exponent tells you that it's a reciprocal. So it's 1 over 8 to the 1 third. And the 1 third tells you that it's a cube root. And we also know that 8 is 2 to the power of 3. And since it's a cube root, of a power of 3, that just becomes 2. Here, this negative, you have to be very careful about where your negatives are. If they're an exponent, they're going to cause this to happen. But if they're not an exponent, that is not going to happen. So it's very common for, for people to, in their mind, think that a negative will cause a fraction to appear. But a negative say you had negative 2, that doesn't mean 1 half. Uh, those are not the same. So be careful of what kind of negative is. So this is negative, that's on the outside, and the 64 is being taken to the power of 2 thirds, which means it's a cube root of 64 squared. So in order to evaluate the cube root, we actually need to figure out what the factors are here. Now 64 itself is actually 8 squared, so it's 8 times 8, but then the whole thing is squared, so it's going to actually be times 8 times 8. Now, each of those is 2 to the power 3. So you have cube root, if you really want to write it out, that's 3 2's here, 3 2's here, 3 2's here, 3 2's here, that's 2 cubed to the power of 4. You could write it out, but you could also just in your mind see that that's the same as saying 2 to the 4 to the power of 3, which will then help you simplify the cube roots, which will then be negative 2 to the power of 4, which is 4 times 4, and that's negative 16. So, this is just a very complicated way of writing negative 16. Try the next one. So this negative is just part of this number. We've got this bracket, so this whole thing is being taken to the one-third in the denominator, which means 1 over cube root of negative 125. And if you know your cubes pretty well, you know that cube, 5 cubed will be 125, so, and a cube root of a negative is a negative, so that's going to actually be negative 5. So that's negative 1 fifth there. Now here we have a fraction taken to a negative exponent. So remember the negative exponent will go to both top and bottom, will cause the top to go to the bottom and the bottom to go to the top. So we could actually just write it as 81 over 16 to the 3 quarters. And so we've dealt... Notice I'm dealing with the negative exponents first. That way you don't get confused with them. So exponents also go to top and bottom, so that you could treat this as 81 to the 3 quarters over 16 to the 3 quarters. This is all according to exponent rules. So you've got the fourth root of 81 cubed and the fourth root 
of 16 cubed. So let's see if rather than writing out all the factors of 81, all the prime factors, think of writing it as powers of factors. It just You see how exponents are useful in helping you not have to write things out so many times. So 81 is 9 times 9, so that's actually 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 3 to the 4, but it's all being cubed right now. And the bottom one is 16, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the power 4, but that's being taken to the 3. Again, you can rearrange and treat 3 groups of 4 3's as the same as 4 groups of 3 3's similarly in the bottom and I'm only doing that because I know it's a fourth root and I know that cancels it um, so that leaves us 3 cubed over 2 cubed which is 3 over 2 cubed so that's 27 over 8 so here are some more simplifying examples and this video is packed with examples so that you can uh, get a feel for these. Hopefully these give you a big enough variety. So you want to assume that all our variables are positive as we have been doing already and we always want to leave our answers with positive exponents. You should remind yourself of exponent rules and, um, and also the rule uh, of converting a fraction exponent to and back and forth with a root. So here, this is actually six, x to the 18 over 6, which is x to the 3, and that's it. Here we've got a to the 1 half times a to the 2 thirds. Remember, we add our exponents when we multiply, so that's going to be 1 half plus 2 thirds, but when we add fractions, we need common denominators. Turn these both into 6, so we've got 3 sixths plus 4 sixths is 7 sixths. So here it says to answer with positive exponents, so we can leave it like that. Now this is actually 2 to the 1 third to the power of 1 half. So when we have exponents like that, we want to multiply them. So 1 third times 1 half is 1 sixth x to the 1 fourth over x to the 1 fifth. What do we do when we divide exponents? We subtract them. So you should try be trying these out on your own just to make sure you can do it. So that's x to the power of 5 twentieths minus 4 twentieths is 1 twentieth. Similarly when you multiply exponents or you multiply uh, terms with exponents, we add the exponents again. So that's 2 fifths minus 3 quarters, which you need a common denominator. So that's 8 twentieths minus 15 twentieths. And you can see that that gives you a negative, a negative 7 twentieths, which then is 1 over x to the 7 twentieths. And finally, um, we've got a mixed one. So let's do the bottom first. We have to add those. So that's a to the negative 1 quarter plus 2 thirds. Common denominator a to the one-third over a to the negative three-twelfths plus eight-twelfths. So that's five-twelfths. Let's convert this guy so that it's also a twelfth. So that's four-twelfths minus five-twelfths. That'll be a to the negative one-twelfth, which is one over a to the one-twelfth. So I went through these a little quick, but hopefully you can uh, try them on your own and figure them out.
I've got two more super complicated examples for you just to uh, give you some beefy examples. So with questions like this, it's just like what you were doing with, with exponents except we've got fractions as exponents. So if you have the same base, then remember you can simplify inside. I actually like to simplify inside first. So what I have here, so this is like 1 over 3 to the power of negative 1, so that's actually going to go up. But let's deal with the p. So up top, the p will be negative 1 fourth minus negative 2 over 1 from here. And then I'll have q to the negative 3 halves minus negative 3 halves, all to the negative 2. So this 3 here is negative 1, so it's going to come up as a 3 to the 1. Then I have p to the, and we need a common denominator, so it's negative 1 quarter plus 8 quarters. So that's 7 quarters and q is to the negative 3 plus 3 halves. So that's 0. And remember anything to the power of 0 is just 1. So it's actually times 1 doesn't really matter so it's actually gone. So we just have 3 p to the 7 fourths to the negative 2 which is 3 to the negative 2 times p to the 7 fourths to the negative 2. So here we're going to multiply these. 3 negative 2, p to the, cancel if possible, that's, that'll be negative 7 over 2. So both of these are going to the denominator, so you have 1 over 3 squared, which is 9, p to the 7 halves. Now that's a very difficult example, but it simplifies to this. My suggestion is to try to simplify the inside first if possible. Finally, we have a distribution example. So you could be distributing these. So you're actually going 7y to the 8 fifths times y to the negative 8 fifths minus 7y to the 8 fifths times 3y to the negative 3 fifths and the minus was because plus times minus is minus. So that's 7, y to the common denominators, that's great. 8 minus 8, look at that, that's 0. So that's actually just 7, <laughs> and minus 7 to the 8 fifths, minus 3 fifths, and this is 7 times 3, which is 21, and y to the 8 fifths minus 3 fifths, which is 5 fifths, which is just 1. So this is just a 7 times 1 minus 21y to the 1. And these final Mondo examples, x to the 1 quarter, to the 1 third, to the 1 half, multiply them all together, you get x to the 12 times 2, which is 1 24th. And here, x to the 5 fourth over x to the 2 third. That's x to the 5 fourths minus 2 thirds. Get a common denominator. And you know how to do that by now, hopefully. So that's 15 twelfths minus 8 twelfths, which is 7 twelfths.